oh, I've been blown away since I first caught just 15 minutes of a story almost a month ago now. When I, I was like, wow, because, you know, the real scary part of that story, too, is his own um, factions within the military, that he was in the military, came to his you know, hospital bed, not to see, hey, how are you? Call knuckleheads and give them truth serum and pump them up with that to get to find out what they what they saw and make sure they didn't take no pictures. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's you know the the the, the thing too. I think it he, the way it sounded like with Terry Lovelace, he was planning to stay in the military a lot longer than he did. I think after the encounter, what he saw. And then what he had to go through was enough where I think it um, it caused him not to uh, not to want to stay in it. Oh, definitely. I think for sure that he was probably a little disgruntled. I mean, I can't blame him. I mean, really, for what his own government basically did to him. I, I mean, yeah, and I think he, I was under kind of an impression also that yeah, he wanted to be in there a lot longer than he was and. I mean, look at the ordeal. He, he didn't just go through an ordeal with these daggone aliens. He went through an ordeal with the, um, whatever it was, the secret branch of the military or whatever. So that's, that's very frustrating stuff. I mean, he, he was in a vicious circle. What do you do? You say something, you don't say something. It's not like they came forward. The the secret military there came to him. Yeah, but they, yeah. They, they, what they wanted him to do is basically admit that he didn't see one. That that's the part, you know, I didn't like. But I guess, you know, what they do is they try brainwashing you. And evidently, too, when that doesn't work, they inject something into you, you know, to, to find out exactly what you went through. And then they try to convince you you never saw it. Yeah, and that's, boy, I got to tell you, just that just has rotten, <laughs> rotten all over it. Negative tones on, on all ends of it. Gee, man, I, yeah, I don't like that at all. Mm-mm. No, I don't know. Uh, it, and you know, um, you know, all them reports. Remember, I was reporting from lawn there. The all them reports from that cryptids from uh, Rosemont area. They're still getting sightings over there in that area, still of the Mothman type winged humanoid stuff. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, like when we had Joe on last night, you know, I, Mothman is appearing more and more all over the country. You know, before it was only certain areas, but now it seems to be like in Texas, really heavy. Uh, there was a report here about a week ago in Oregon that they somebody saw, claimed they saw a Mothman. I, I, I don't know. But, you know, after you sent that picture of that bat to me, too, you know, that, that bat probably was about, about three feet long. Yeah, and you know, there's another owl. Um, what the heck is the name of this owl? I can't think of the name of this owl, but it's big and it's got red eyes. And a lot of people report stuff that looks kind of like an owl with red eyes. And I, I could see how it could be misidentified easily, easily. And that bat, my goodness, these things are huge. Uh, and and you know, there's another. There's an eagle, a harpy eagle that is, my God, massively giant. It's not native to this country, but neither are pythons, like I've been saying. Who's to say that one's uh, got loose from a storm or whatever's out in the wild now, and people see it? I could definitely see how you'd think, my goodness, is, is that a, a Mothman or what is it? Well, I, <laughs> as long as I don't want to, you know, I, I wouldn't want to run across one. But, you know, again, you know, I was looking at that picture of that bat. I, I swear to God, it does have kind of a dog-looking face, it, 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 and it looks friendly. It does. It's got, you know, it's not your normal bat. It's, it's got like hair on it. You know what I mean? Like hair like a dog almost, like fur. It's not, you know, most bats are just, um, I forget the word, just like skin basically. But this bat's not. It's got like a long snout. I mean, it looks like a dog, like a terrier almost. Yeah. Well, maybe a bat got ambitious at one point. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. And, maybe, you know, maybe uh, it's the aliens cross changing uh the dna just to see what the results were i, I again I, I i'm still kind of puzzled and maybe whitley can kind of explain some of this to me i i all these years that we've been visited now in his new book 
he claims now that he understands they're kind of trying to teach us stuff slowly. And that's what I want to find out tonight, because I am so confused with what is going on. Because, again, so many people claim that they they were treated so poorly when they were abducted and, and abused and, uh, you know, subject to such horrendous type of experiments. It, it just makes me wonder what is going on. Well, there, there's there's an X factor with that, number one. And, and honestly, and this was in the mid yeah, mid nineties sometimes, so roughly twenty five years, give or take a couple years. I did in my research and stuff, clandestine cloak and dagger stuff I was doing, I did see a, a document and I don't know if it was it, it really looked legit to me. If it was fake, it was a really good fake. And on this document it listed government document that they our government knew of a hundred and sixty eight different species or races of aliens, whatever you want to describe it. I think they said races that they knew of. Now this was twenty some years ago. Now, even with that said, um, let's just say there's maybe ten coming here, coming and going. They all have their own agendas. There's probably good ones and bad ones, and most of them. I don't care how you church it up. If they're taking you against your will and doing jiggy stuff with you and putting you back on and scramming your brain and stuff, that's just it's just got negative overtones to it. Especially like the one that told Terry what that said, What are you yelling about? It don't hurt you. Well, it does hurt and they're putting implants in you. you imagine if I ducted you and brought you somewhere and, and did some crazy stuff to you and messed with your brain and put some kind of implant in you and and, and I was nice enough to let you go back home instead of keeping you for a meal. I mean, these are all just it, I it just rubs me the wrong way. Well, it, it does me too. So I mean, that's the part it really scares me. And I also think that these beings, I think they try to, I don't know if the word is brainwashing or if they can implant, implant visions or false memories where they, they make you think it's okay, where you pretty much come over to, well, like Terry said, the Stockholm Syndrome almost, you know, and because I have seen, especially over a period of time where people, when they first realize that they were like really upset until they get to the point where they're almost lethargic and, and when they say it and they say, well, it's okay. It, it just, I can see the change, and it's not a positive change. It's not like, you know, it's okay, they're going to help us, and no, it's, it's, there's, there's an underlying negative there. I can feel it. Yeah, well, a lot of people are feeling that that's the whole problem. Yeah, I, and, and the people are, are coming out right and left. There's so many people now claiming that they're being abducted. It's not like this, a few people. It's like every week there's a bunch of new people saying the, the, the same thing, that they were abducted. And it's, it's getting to the point where I get emails every day from people saying, you know, I was abducted in 1997 or I was abducted in 2004. It, you're right. And, and, you know, it's like an iceberg effect. All the ones that come forward. Who knows how many that aren't, like just like the hidden iceberg under the water. Who knows how many people have had experiences that won't come forward because of different reasons. Maybe uh, being, being afraid to be uh, scorned or shamed or whatever the reason. It, it, there's a whole gamut of reasons why they might not come forward. But you know there's a bunch of them like that also. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? We're just a few minutes away from, you know, Whitney will be on at uh, 710. And uh, I've been waiting for weeks to get him on. I mean, certainly, I, I've just been so excited. It's like the number one guest in abduction cases ever. I, I'm telling you, I'm sitting here looking at his first book ever. I remember it's the first edition, 1987 or 88, whenever it came out. And uh, I paid $5 for it when it came out back in, well, 30 years ago, almost over, a little over 30 years and that was weird because I was living in Upper State New York at the time, and I and I'm reading where he was living. I'm like, well, that really sent shivers up my spine. I got to tell you, yeah. So yeah. Are we got yeah, well, we got news coming up here in a few minutes. Is it going to be more exciting news too? Uh, oh, I've got some stuff. You know, I do. And you know, a lot of people talk about Wright Patterson uh, Air Force Base. You know, I was I went there one time to 
kind of <laughs> under the, the guise of fishing. <laughs> and I was kind of nosing around. And, you know, you can't, this was back probably about year 2000 or somewhere around there, but um, even back then, you couldn't, if you look too long in one spot, they were, they were all over. They were like, they're on it over there. You know, there's been rumors there of hangar, uh, hangar 19 or 18 or whatever, and underground bunkers and all kind of stuff there at Wright Pat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on over there. I There just is. You know, there's been a lot of sightings in, in that Dayton, Ohio area, and uh, and nobody's ever really come forward. I think that one, there was a big, it was a big case. I can't think of the guy's name now, but anyway, there's been a lot of sightings and stuff over there. And Whitley, uh, yeah, my goodness, that poor guy's been through it. Man, oh man, you imagine he's got 30 years of stuff to talk about. Because that's another pattern. These these abductees, um, it's, most of the time it's not a one-of. It's usually throughout your lifetime periodically. Yeah, that's the problem. You know, like you, the, you, we've had guests on that their first abduction when they were a young kid, like seven or eight years old. And then, you know, it kept on going all through, you know, as they were growing up. And then now they're in their 50s and 60s and they're still getting abducted. As you know, like Terry Lovelace said, you know, he as a, a lot of the um, abductees claim they they keep guns next to their bed because they don't want to go through it again and that's the scary part yeah it is you know i knew a guy he's a friend of mine who lived over in uh, on the east coast there and he was abducted and his brother and they were abducted throughout the years i remember they, uh, telling me their stories their stories on bone chilling and you know even this was back i haven't seen them since the late 90s since i moved from the east coast but you know, they would tell me the same thing, and it kind of put a light bulb off my head. They they told me even then they sleep with a they had a revolver and a flashlight right next to them when they went to bed every night. Well, I same thing. Yeah, I get that's yeah. the whole problem. Well, let's go on break, and then after the break, uh, you'll be uh, doing the news, or actually right after the uh, uh, commercial break, and then we'll uh, get a hold of Whitley, and we'll be doing some talking so we'll be back uh in about uh two and a half three minutes and then we'll have the uh the earth news with james and then we'll be on with whitney right after that so stay tuned And there ain't nothing that the panic 